All right, today we are going to learn a little bit about using the Wacom stylus pens. They take a little getting used to, and you might have to put a little bit of work into it, but if you trust me and you put that work into it and you learn how to use it and you get used to it, it's going to make your photo retouching and the experience you have, especially in Adobe Photoshop, it's going to make it so much better. Uh, the first thing that you want to know is that your pen nibs uh, or the, the pen stylus that you have has two buttons on them. The, the button that is closest to the pen nib, that tip, is uh, by default is a scroll feature and the button that is farthest away is a right click. Um, what you probably want to do is experiment with that and change it. So one of the things that you'll be able to do is um, is you can go ahead and go into your preferences. So mine is located in my Windows folder under my Wacom tablet and tablet properties. When you start your computer, there might be a W symbol down at the bottom on yours. And mine looks slightly different than what yours is going to look like, but essentially it's the same thing. When you click on the pen properties, um, you can change what these are. And I've changed my, uh, my button here from a scroll, so a navigation, which is a scroll up or down or a pan scroll. I changed it to just a regular click. So uh, the top button here is right click. This is a regular click. If you have problems with this, you can just Google how do you adjust the settings in Wacom and uh, you can go ahead and find this. So once you have that set, go ahead and find the Google Classroom today. And what you're going to need to grab from it is this pen stylus practice activity. Uh, if you click on it, uh, I'm going to use the right click function to right click on this picture. And I'm going to choose save image as. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my documents. It's the pen stylus practice. And I hit save. Now, open Adobe Photoshop, and you should have this practice activity here. This is the first time we're using Adobe Photoshop, so I'll familiarize yourself with the program. Go up to Window, go to Workspace, and choose Photography. That's the first thing you want to do. That makes sure that what you are looking at is what I'm looking at right now. This is similar to most Adobe programs, but it is quite different than what Lightroom looks like. Up at the top is a menu bar, file, edit, image, layer. All of these things are the typical menu bars you see in most Windows-based programs. If I want to do anything with a file, like save a file, if I want to print a file, if I want to open a file or create a new one, I go here. If I want to edit something, edit something as far as a part of my image, you do it in the edit so I can copy things, I can paste things. Um, I can fill things. Those are common features we do here. Uh, image is adjusting the entire image. So if you want to adjust uh, the brightness or the exposure or vibrancy, much like you uh, have the sliders in Lightroom, you can adjust those here. Uh, layer. This is probably the most important part of Adobe Photoshop. If you look at how it's laid out, on the right hand side is a palette. That's what they call all of these things here. Uh, this is your layers palette. It's probably the most important part of Adobe Photoshop. You can create new layers by simply clicking on this icon on the layers palette. And what a layer is, is it is kind of like a transparent piece of paper that you lay on top of something. You can draw on it, you can cut and paste other photo elements on top of it, you can stack layers as different photos and all of those things. Um, so what you what you want to do basically is you, you want to create a new layer and the tools that are on the left, this is what, what we call our toolbox, the tool that we're going to use today is the paintbrush. 
and that's what's going to get us used to painting. And so what I've created here is just a test file for you to kind of create and test some things out. When you click on the paintbrush, you'll notice at the top, right underneath the menu bar, is um, op an options palette that opens up, and it gives you options for whatever tool you have selected. So on the paintbrush tool, I can change the size of the brush. I can change something called the hardness, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, you can change the style of brush by scrolling through all of these, and I highly recommend you play around and try different brushes out today. Um, just kind of painting and drawing on the screen. Uh, if you want to undo something that you've done, you can go to Edit, Undo Brush. Control Z is the quick key for that. If you go to Edit again, you can keep hitting Control Z on the keyboard and it will keep undoing the last things that you've done. If I keep hitting it, it undoes everything. So, taking the brush and increasing the size, you can see what this brush looks like. I can go and undo those. Then I can go grab a different brush. And do this again. Now, another pet palette shows up here. It's called the brush settings. I'm going to hide it for now and I'm going to go back to my brushes and I'm going to just choose a regular old brush just like this. Draw on the screen. Feel free to mess this up. As long as you've created a layer over here you can just get rid of it by simply grabbing the layer and dragging it to the trash icon and deleting it. Now I'm going to create another layer by clicking on that, it creates a new layer, and then I'm going to play around. So another option you have for the brush when you are in the brush here is you can, in, you can change the color down here. There's two colors right now that are active on my screen. There's a green and sort of like a dark brown. The color that is on top, if you imagine these as two little pieces of paper, the color that's on top is the one that you're using. So if I click on it, it opens up a color picker. So I can pick any color that I want. I can scroll over here. I can make that color lighter or darker. So I'm going to pick something that's going to stand out. So I'm going to pick red. That's really going to stand out here. Now, going over here, what I want you to practice is I want you to practice drawing on these targets. Now, you can increase or decrease the size of the brush, again, by going up here and increasing or decreasing the size. But you can also do it by right-clicking on the screen anywhere and increasing or decreasing. Or you can hit open bracket and closed bracket on your computer screen and do the same thing. So if you notice, I'm just practicing hitting a target this is really good practice for when you are uh, when you're working with the stylus practicing moving around just the fact that you can hit these targets um, will give you uh, some some idea of uh, how to move around with the screen and the pen tablet all right so I'm back um, what I was talking about was just practicing with the stylus. One of the things that I want you to try to do is trace over the lines that I've drawn. You can, again, delete the layers. You can create new ones and continue practicing. Uh, being able to kind of carefully control where you're drawing is important. And one of the things that makes this hard is that you sort of have to detach looking at where your hand is because you're really looking at the screen and not what you're what you're actually physically drawing. Um, what I'm going to do for this one here is I'm going to increase the size of the brush. Go over here, increase the size of my brush. Practice drawing with bigger and bigger brushes. 
Now, if you notice, the brushes that I've drawn right now kind of fade from the middle out and sort of are very soft with their edges. That is one of the features that you can change on the brush and how it works is to change something called the hardness. So if I were to change the hardness to 100%, you could see that it's a much different kind of line. It has very hard edges uh, as opposed to changing the brush to very, very soft. And I do the same sort of um, same size. It almost even looks smaller because the edges kind of fade away. The other thing that you can do with a brush is you can change how the brush acts when you uh, press harder or softer on the stylus on the tablet. You're going to do that over here on brush preferences. I want you to turn shape dynamics on and under control put it on pen pressure. Sorry, pen pressure is what I wanted. When I minimize this, Notice when I go when I press very softly, it's a very small line, and when I press hard, it makes a very big line. So go ahead and try to mimic this, where I'm getting harder and then softer as I finish that line. Then I'm going to go. Uh, I'll right-click this time, and I'll set my hardness to 100%, and I'll do the same thing. Very soft and then I will press hard and then I will fade to very 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 soft again. Uh, doing this over and over again and getting just practice using the tool is probably the best way that you can learn it. Um, I can delete this layer but instead of that I'm gonna hit the little eyeball icon and it's gonna hide that layer and allow me to make another one. This time I'm gonna change my color to something else and I'm going to do this all over again. I'm going to go with a hard brush now and I'm going to bring my size down and I'm just going to practice hitting my targets, hitting those targets, hitting those targets. Then I'll increase my size, trying to hit this. You can go ahead and turn the shape dynamics off and then you can do other dynamics, like uh, you can do the actual um, you can set up the opacity of the brush to do the same thing. So if I look at the scattering or texture color dynamics. You have saturation, you have brightness. If I do... So what I was looking for, and they moved it in the new Adobe Photoshop, is up here, is the opacity effect. So if I enable this by clicking on this, uh, as I'm pressing softer, it will be less opaque, and if I press harder, it will be more opaque. Uh, it'll look a little bit better with a softer brush, but you can see how I can paint very lightly if I'm pressing lightly, or I can paint very darkly if I press darker. You can actually increase or decrease those settings as well by increasing flow or opacity or both right here. So I have the opacity at 100%. If I paint and press very hard, it's very opaque and it over it goes over whatever's below it. If I paint with a soft pressure with my hand, it's not as dark. These are all really good things to practice and learn how to do when you are uh, when you're working. Feel free to watch this video a couple times and rewind it. Um, just kind of uh, pausing it when you need to pause it and looking at what I'm doing. This is probably the longest video I'm, I'm going to make this year, but um, I'm not there to help you or to go through this, so I just wanted to show you some things that you can play with. Feel free to play and experiment with 
different colors, different brush types. Coming over here and changing that brush type again. Um, feel free to experiment with different layers, seeing what you can do with those. Um, and then if if you are in doubt and you don't know how to do something, just Google it or ask a neighbor and and see what it what it's like. And when I come back tomorrow, we'll we'll kind of go over what we what you learned today with uh, with this tool. Thanks.